you talked about Giacomini wetland reclamation and restoration. Is it fair to say that the first step in restoration is to remove cattle? <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, you're not going to restore anything if you still have cattle on there. Okay. It's it's just it's refreshing to hear you say that because I'm living in an age where it's being put out there that you know cattle are necessary for regeneration and things like that. Well, okay. Uh, the Spanish came to California, what, in the 1600s or 1700s and released cattle throughout California. Uh, they pretty much grazed everything into the dirt and they uh, had to seed uh, European annuals in order to actually uh, provide forage for this uh, leather market, really, that uh, was, you know, Spain was famous for. Uh, one of my colleagues and mentors mentioned that he grew up in Moraga. And 50 years ago, those hillsides were denuded. They were just grassland. And they have come back into oak and scrub community, coastal uh, scrub communities and things like that uh, in the absence of cattle grazing. So, you know, that's a pretty, pretty telling tale in and of itself that here's an individual who's lived here long enough to see that kind of change, uh, you know, when cattle were removed from the landscape and to see oak woodland and coastal scrub communities come back. Uh, that's a very telling story to me. And that was just passive recovery? Yeah. Wow. And I always like to follow that up with the animals that were present prior to the cattle, because it's not like that land was just left alone. There were, you know, various species of native animals that were uh, grazing and browsing and using that land. And that land, oh, managed, sure. that land managed. Uh, by if all. we go back in time, you know, the, the Central Valley was a huge marsh, uh, a huge wetland anyway, and uh, two major river systems fed by, you know, the runoff from the Sierras. Uh, it would have been fantastic. And you had tule elk and you had, you know, black tailed deer and you had, uh, you didn't have wild pigs, you could tell you that. Uh, you had grizzly bear, uh, black bear, mountain lion, all kinds of things wandering around through the, through the landscape and various habitats and probably fantastic bird diversity, you know, with hundreds of thousands of waterfowl and, uh, you know, raptor communities and things like that. So if you go back to that point uh, and then you get any little bit of that coming back is, is, you know, worth it. It's definitely something that, you know, people don't have that kind of long-term historic perspective in terms of what was here and what could be here as a result of certain management practices. And Point Reyes is just an example of, you know, one spot. I'm going to stop the interview right there for now because I've done this long enough that I know it doesn't matter who I put on the camera. It doesn't matter who I interview. It doesn't matter what their credentials are. It doesn't matter what I film, what I document firsthand. It doesn't matter what I show you. It doesn't matter what the history books say. It doesn't matter what the accounts of the early explorers were describing how fertile and bountiful the land was and that the herds just went on and on and on. And yet it didn't look like a feedlot. It just doesn't matter because if you don't want to believe it, and if it doesn't bide with your current lifestyle, then you're going to reject it. But the information is out there. It's been presented to you. And history will show that you chose to ignore knowledge because you want to pursue a destructive lifestyle. Just because that's what you're already familiar and comfortable with most intelligent species my ass.